I just want to interject here quick to remind you guys that we are giving away a copy, two copies, in fact, of Mario Strikers Battle League to kick off our Prime Gaming Fest on June 9th at 9 a.m. I mentioned June 9th at 9 a.m. because that is when we will be announcing the winners of these copies to kick off Prime Gaming Fest. If you want more details on this giveaway and how to enter, head to that uh, link in the description. It is through, I believe, a tiny URL, uh, but it just takes you out to the Viral Sweep application to enter. I wish all of you guys luck, and let's get right back into Prime News. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Nintendo Prime. This is Prime News, and this is the first time you've ever seen an episode of Prime News. Why don't you go ahead and drop a subscribe and a like. This is where we talk about all of the latest gaming news every single day. AM hopefully we try to get the episode out by at least noon central time and we have a bunch of stories today We got a weird story dealing with Xbox DRM and somehow hey look they kind of screwed the pooch and made a mistake Oh, we also have some sales updates on Nintendo switch and by the way Did you know Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is coming soon as is a potential indie world? Oh boy, we get some big ones today and we're gonna start today with sales So we have a couple stories from last week we want to cover dealing with sales and the first one deals with the fact that the Nintendo Switch has outsold the 3DS officially in Japan. Now the Nintendo Switch has sold 24.6 million units in Japan which is just a little bit ahead of the Nintendo 3DS but about 8 million behind the Nintendo DS which is the best selling system in Japan of all time. So this is really exciting news obviously as the 3 3DS is kind of getting further and further back and the DS isn't for sale anymore and the Switch sales are still rolling in Japan another hundred thousand plus in the last week so that's really really good news for Nintendo now besides that the switch has also outsold the PlayStation 4 here in the United States with about 35.62 million Nintendo switch sales compared to 35.25 million sales of PlayStation 4 now this is according to VG charts so these aren't official numbers but they will be updated soon and yeah it's very obvious the switch is going to pass PlayStation 4 here in the US even if it's not past it right now so what does this mean for the future of switch basically that it's doing really really well and Nintendo's got nothing to worry about at least this year we'll see what Nintendo thinks for next year or the year after you know a lot of people wondering when Nintendo's gonna even start contemplating releasing new hardware well you know hey the, we're already seeing some all-time records go down. We'll see how long Nintendo wants to keep it going. I know some people hope the Switch could just keep going until it passes the PlayStation 2 all-time record, but you know, there's things more important than just trying to put a feather in your cap of, oh yay, this system sold 152 million. Like, hoping to sell 100 million plus of Nintendo's next system, I think matters much more to Nintendo than worry about this one getting to 152, 153 million units. That being said, the Switch is selling incredibly well, and we have no idea when momentum is going to hit a point that we could actually say it's stalling right now obviously sales data is going to be up and down depending on supply in different regions uh, but yeah we're still at that point where we can go yeah the switch sales are just massively declining because well they're not and with the game lineup this year I'm not sure that they ever will our next story here deals with Xbox and on Prime News we like to cover massive stories that happen on other platforms if it's Seemed as something that we need to pay a lot of attention to just as gamers. And to be honest, this Xbox DRM situation is huge. So there's been a concern about DRM on the Xbox and really all platforms for some time, but specifically with the Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah, PlayStation has issues in the past with CMOS batteries and other things that, you know, there was a lot of fan backlash against and, you know, the Sony eventually did fix. But we are focusing on Xbox here because over the weekend they had several outages that affected a majority of Xbox servers especially here in the United States, a lot of these outages lasting over nine hours. Now, this matters because, not because, oh, the servers are down, wow, we can't play games online, wow, Game Pass users can't play their games. Obviously, that's a big ding against Game Pass is that you have to be connected online to use it. But how about if you bought your digital games? Let's say you bought, I don't know, a copy of Ori and you own it digitally and you have it downloaded on your Xbox. Then you know Microsoft touted that you could actually play your owned games offline, right? They have an offline mode actually in the settings on Xbox. So yeah. Obviously, this shouldn't even be a problem. The DRM stuff should only really affect things that require an online connection. Except, as users found out over the weekend, even if you own a digital copy and have it fully installed on your Xbox, you still can't play it if the servers are offline because you need to confirm ownership of that game by being connected to Xbox Live, which when the servers are down, you can't be connected to Xbox Live. 
which means you can't get server authentication, which means you can't play the games you own. AKA Xbox is basically a useless brick without the internet. Now, this isn't necessarily something that is gonna bother everyone out there because most people are not gonna be buying an Xbox unless they plan for them to be always online. But this does bring to, you know, it brings to the forefront this entire idea that this always online mentality we have has some major drawbacks. If there's server issues, if you have local internet service provider issues, you suddenly won't be able to enjoy games that you actually might own, not necessarily the Game Pass games or online games. Some people can understand that, hey, if you're paying for an online service like Game Pass, duh, you're not gonna be able to play it without access to Game Pass. Oh, you know, if you play games online, duh, you can't play online games without access to online. But what about games you actually own? That seems to be the major issue here. And I don't know what Microsoft could do to really fix this because they would have to fundamentally change how their entire platform runs. Uh, I really hope they do something about this. It's obviously, uh, you know, it's something that Switch owners have to worry about to a lesser degree. We can play all of our digital games offline, or can we? You know what's funny about digital games on Nintendo Switch, and this is something I've discovered since owning a Switch OLED, is if you have a second Nintendo Switch unit that you wanna play your owned games on, guess what? You can't without connecting online because every time you go to play the game, you need to connect to Nintendo servers to confirm that that account owns that game, even though it's the same account on both systems. Kind of a problem. In fact, it's actually gotten so bad that even though I've transferred my main account to my Switch OLED, it still makes me connect to double check that I have ownership, even though my other Switch now has to do the same thing because it's no longer my main Switch. Look, obviously this isn't perfect for any of these companies, and now you know Nintendo has some of these issues cropping up. And some of you guys might not experience that, maybe you're not dealing with a multiple Switch situation. This is really, you know, first world problem, unique to people trying to rock multiple Switches, but still, uh, <laughs> this always online thing, has some major drawbacks and I'm someone who literally makes YouTube videos and I'm online all the time. And uh, yeah, I couldn't play Xbox this weekend really during the time period I had available. And in the past I've had issues when Nintendo servers were down and I couldn't play my Nintendo games either. So I really hope that uh, they do something about this because uh, I, I deeply fear what's gonna happen when literally Everything requires an internet connection no matter what. So Reggie fils has been going on a round of interviews lately because he's promoting his book, uh, which his book seems pretty, pretty good. I think what, one thing to remember in these interviews and remember from these books is this is just one person's perspective, right? Because he's actually done quite a bit of a, uh, sort of shitting on Nintendo. I think he's made it very difficult to ever get rehired by them. Not that he wants to be rehired by them, but yeah, uh, it's been really interesting hearing how much he's been kind of throwing Nintendo under the bus. And he sort of does it again in an interview with, uh, well, really a, a podcast he did with the Kind of Funny crew and the Kind of Funny Gamecast. And he talked about Other M because Other M, Nintendo thought was gonna be this massive game that was gonna take Metroid to the next level. And it really didn't. And here's what, uh, according to Reggie fils he told the developers in a private meeting after the game came out. I really thought that this was going to be a defining moment for the Metroid franchise. It was given much more of a perspective about Samus. I really thought that was going to be a killer moment in the franchise's history, and it wasn't. It didn't deliver. Not the business results. It really didn't touch the player the way we hoped it would. Interestingly, I was in a large group meeting, a strategy meeting with Satoru Iwata and Shigeru Miyamoto and the game developers, and we talked about why not. I was always the brash American. I was the one who would say what I believed was truth to try and help the business move forward. The point I made to developers was it took too long to get into the meat and potatoes of this game. The first five hours of the game, you kind of plotted around. There wasn't a lot of payoff. There was a lot of dialogue, and I'm sure it pissed people off in the room. But the learning here was the player wants to get into this much faster. Yes, there are elements we need to do from a tutorial standpoint to help them understand the game mechanics, but you need to move things along much quicker. And hopefully that advice had a little bit of an impact on the developers. Now look, Reggie's gonna Reggie and say what he has to say. I find all of this to be quite fascinating. Obviously, it's nice to hear that you know, in these meetings, it appears that Reggie wasn't just like sitting back and just listening. Oh, what's Nintendo or Japan gonna do? Oh, what are the, th let me tell you from an American perspective what we think. Uh, and I don't know that he necessarily nailed all of our criticisms we have with other M, but it is fascinating just to see how open Reggie's being right now about some of these really private moments that 
Nintendo. Um, and, and maybe it's because Satoru Iwata has passed away. I think a lot there's a lot of, hey, you know what, the guy that, that I respected, that I was going to hold all this back for is no longer with us. So I got no reason to really just like not say anything. Um, it's kind of interesting because I feel like he's fraying his relationship with Nintendo slowly uh, with some of the stuff he's putting out there. I mean, in fact, he talked about how oh, this isn't the Nintendo I left when these allegations came out, when a lot of these allegations were happening while Reggie fils was factually at Nintendo, kind of throwing Doug Bowser and the rest under the rug. So I, yeah, this is just not looking uh, good in terms of Reggie's relationship with Nintendo. But for Reggie himself, he's obviously reaping a lot of the benefits of all the attention. And obviously we are getting a lot of supposed inside information. He also talked briefly on Mother 3 at various outlets as well. Um, the large conclusion on Mother 3 not coming over is it wasn't financially viable. Uh, and yeah, basically if the Wii U had maybe been a success, there was a higher chance then that we might have got it. But it flopped and I don't know. It, it basically just comes down to it not being a financial um, boon for Nintendo. So they basically don't think it's going to sell well, well enough to justify. So anyways, let's get into our next story. And this deals with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge due out this summer. Still don't have an exact release date, but it does feel like it's coming extremely soon. We've seen a lot of gameplay recently, obviously with PAX East, people got to go hands on with it. And now Game Informer got to go on, hands on with an exclusive demo. And oh, there's a whole bunch of footage. You're seeing it now. Like, yeah, I'll put a link to their full video down in the description. If you want to see like the whole 11 plus minutes we're not going to show all of it here but the big thing i'm taking away from this is the game looks amazing after seeing all the footage at pax east and now seeing even more today this really has solidified that i am buying this game day one uh yeah again we don't know when it's coming it's just coming summer but the fact we're getting all this footage now makes it seem like it's really coming in the next month or two i would say by the end of july we're likely going to see it uh and i don't know this reminds me of the classic turtle games with modern twists and new abilities and new things brought in that that really expand on that arcade style Turtles game. And that just has me super tickled because that's when Turtles was at its best. Heck, I've been debating on buying like arcade one-up cabinets with Turtles and Time in it because I really, really miss these classic games. I know we got the collection coming, but there's something about playing them on an arcade unit that's just special and nostalgic, but still, TMNT Shredder's Revenge is coming to basically all platforms, including Switch, this summer. So let's just get the game now. I think I've seen enough gameplay. Come on, get this game in my hand already, please. So Emily Rogers is a well-known, well-established Nintendo insider. She's been reporting on exclusive Nintendo stuff for ages, putting lots of rumors and leaks out there, doing in-depth reporting, uh, and even developed some games here and there. Emily Rogers is extremely well-respected in the video game realm. And on the Ford Family Boards in a Nintendo Direct Speculation thread, she put in there a comment that has people assuming we are going to get an indie world quite soon, possibly even this week. And that is because she popped into the thread and said, any indie fans out there? And that's it. That's all she said. Funny thing is she said something very similar last December and that same week we had the announcement of a new indie world in December. So yeah, this is kind of how Emily Rogers teases indie worlds is basically, hey, let me talk about indie games now at a time when nobody else is talking about indie games. We are kind of overdue for an indie world, which typically comes around this time of the year anyways. So yeah, it feels like we could pretty much expect an indie world. Obviously, what a lot of us would like to see are things like Hollow Knight Silk Song. I know Hollow Knight fans are going nuts that we haven't heard anything about this game in so long besides that, oh, it's still in development. Okay, well that, that's great that we heard something, I guess, but when is it coming out? <laughs> it's been in development for so long. Uh, and there's so many other indie games you want to hear about. Obviously, maybe they dropped the release date for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge in this show, and who knows what else. There's so many great games coming this year, indie and AAA-wise, that honestly, I think we could have like an hour-long indie world, and we still wouldn't have all the news we need. So anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Rope with your heads from Nintendo Prime. This was Prime News, and you know what, guys? I'll catch you in that next video.